Hi, and welcome to part two. So, July 31st, we see the sun arriving at Acellus Astralis, the southern ass, in the center of the constellation Cancer. So, one day after the lineup with the precipice or beehive, the sun will arrive at Acellus Astralis, reflective of both Genesis 49.10 and Genesis 45.11. And we see how currently the constellation Cancer is visualized as a crab, while biblically it is both visualized and has the underlying meaning of a cattle fold, which is similar in shape, but has a totally different understanding. And there are multiple explanations why this constellation has been renamed um, according to non-biblical understanding and it also tends to hide some of the underlying meaning so it is a treasure for us to uncover its true biblical meaning and then we can discern how the Lord is speaking to us through that sign. So the tribe of Issachar is connected to the constellation Cancer as Issachar is equated in scripture as being a strong ass crouching down between two burdens, between two folds. And it is referred to in Genesis 49, uh, 14, 15. We also know that the tribe of Issachar, the children of Issachar, were known as men who had understanding of both prophetic time, but also understanding of the social political conditions around them um, and it was not just head knowledge but they also had the wisdom how to apply that knowledge uh, referred to in the second part of that verse knowing what Israel had to do so they had wisdom meaning applied knowledge with regard to the time and the seasons of their day and this uh, talent and understanding help them gain the leadership position they were given over the other tribes. So there is uh, also a correlation between the tribe of Issachar with regard to the new wine and the summer wheat. You can find that in this resource over here. Um, as the constellation Cancer used to be the ancient location where the summer solstice was in Jesus' days. And at that time, the June harvest, the summer wheat harvest was secure. We have been given understanding that there are two wheat harvest portions, one of the spring harvest, and one of uh, the summer harvest and the tribe of Issachar is connected to the summer harvest and it's also woven into the narrative of Rachel and Leah and especially the portion about when uh, Reuben brought the mandrakes which are ripe in this season as well. So you can find more general information how the Bible attributes the meaning to the constellation Can Cancer and the cattle fold by both the author E. W. Bullinger uh, and other authors as well. So what is important for us, uh, having shared in our prior article all the information with regard to how the summer solstice is connected to the rapture, and to a divine exchange between the Lord and his people. Um, what is interesting is that that many scriptures are pointing to the summer solstice as a time and a place where the people would meet the Lord. Um, but the summer solstice in their time took place in the constellation Cancer. So we are actually being invited our attention to our current time frame as we adopt the perspective of the disciples in that day. So the summer solstice denoted the 
Father's house, the resting place of Jesus. Um, it was also known as the summer door, so the open summer door. So the celestial location, I believe we are actually supposed to watch. Um, that happens when we adopt the perspective of the Lord himself and his disciples at that time. So here you can find some underlying information about the sun being in Cancer at the time of the summer solstice, which was also the time and celestial location of the flight into Egypt taking place. So that means that the Magi found the child Jesus beforehand. So that is the picture which is also painted by Neowise in Coma Bernices. Uh, finding Jesus, finding the man child in the house or the celestial place, the constellation where the young child is. So here you find the ancient depiction of Cancer as a cattle fold, so not as a crab. Here you find another depiction of first Leo at the opening of Cancer and Ursa Major as the larger sheepfold and Ursa Minor over here and Argo being the ship which steers the travelers into the travelers inn. So Cancer both has the meaning of the cattle fold, the resting place, but also the destination where Argo, the ship steered by Jesus, taking the pilgrims home. So this is a location of rest, of waiting, of home, of waiting for the Lord to come. And this is what it looked like, or still looks like in real life. Um, so this is a round cattle fold. And what is interesting is that the shepherd, the good shepherd, would be in the place securing entryway and exit. And when Jesus says, I am the way and I am the door, um, by the shepherd taking place, at the entryway, exitway, the doorway of the fold. He manifests that role of allowing to enter and exit, but also safeguarding his own against predators from outside. And we can find that meaning also in the Strong's Concordance in the word nave. Uh, meaning the abode of the shepherd and the flocks, their habitation. There's also a beautiful link between Cancer and the Hebrew writing, the pictography of the letter Chet, meaning the doorway. So these links lead to the underlying meaning of the letter Chet. Um, it denotes the bride and groom, but also the crowned man with the sword of the spirit. So the letter Chet means fence. It has a value of eight and it is tied to the constellation Cancer. And it is a combination of the letters uh, Vav and Sayin, and together it forms a bridge, a binding, a being yoked together. Um, and it's also connected to Exodus 19 as Chet. Um, means doorway, the opening that leads us to a new realm. And we know that the painting of the door with the blood of the Lamb, indicative of the blood of Jesus, which will open the door for us uh, with regard to salvation, is connected to that letter as well. So Chet, with its number value of 8, also represents grace and new beginnings. And it's also tied to discipleship, being closely bound to, connected with the Lord Jesus. 
So this is another depiction of that sheepfold and how the letter Chet is actually indicative of that doorway. When we look at how the enemy has distorted the depiction of the constellation Cancer, we find that in the Freemasonic use of the constellation Cancer as well. They consider it their capstone or their missing keystone, and the underlying meaning is found in these links. And visually, you may recognize it in these pictures. So we see over here how the Masonic arch, the combination of the what they call the pillar of Jacob and Boaz, indicative of the sun and the moon, is showing the capstone, which is the constellation Cancer reflected in the number 69. And there's a beehive cluster underneath. And here you see how they reflect their power or light coming from above into the temple. Of course, they distort it as the light of Lucifer, as their sense of illumination. And we've seen how they've done that in the Ark or the Arch of Palmyra as well. So the constellation is, the constellation Cancer is considered their capstone or their missing keystone. And in these depictions of the Masonic Arch, we often see a very bright star right underneath Cancer that is reflective of Sirius, the dog star, and its heliacal rise, um, denoting the hottest summer days or the dog days of summer. And the heliacal rise is when it rises just before the sun. And that was indicative in ancient days of the flooding of the Nile, which commence the harvest season for the Egyptians. So that is another summer marker at this exact time. So in our days, we're used to denoting the start of summer with the astronomical sign of the summer solstice. And of course, that's behind us already. But when we adopt the understanding and timekeeping in Jesus' days, we see how the constellation Cancer is actually the time and place that we're looking at biblically. And the pagan understanding is reflected in that time and place as well with the blazing of Sirius denoting the dark days of summer. So the fifth month, the month of Av, is correlating to the new wine festival, but also Elijah being taken to heaven, and also the Benjamin tribal snatch of the maidens in the vineyards of Shiloh. So that is another uh, type and shadow of the rapture. So next in the article, you will find an overview of the biblical events in the first weeks of the month of Av. And I'd like to zoom in on the 9th of Av right now with the commemoration of how the people under Moses' leadership were condemned to die in the desert. So that is a commemoration of judgment. In addition to, of course, the destruction of the Holy Temple, first by the Babylonians and then by the Romans. And um, the 10th of Av, we commemorate how Ezekiel delivered a prophecy to the Jewish elders, pointing them towards repentance. We shared that in a prior article as well. And it was a day when it was commemorated that Elijah went to heaven. That is also a foreshadowing of the rapture. So we see on the 15th of Av, on Tubi Av, the Jews find forgiveness of the sin for not believing the spies and the curse of dying in a desert was lifted. We also see the picture of the Shiloh maiden snatch, the dancing of the brides in the vineyards. They were snatched up by the tribe of, Gen of Benjamin, which is also a foreshadowing of the rapture. So in this beautiful way, in the constellation Cancer and with the comet Neowise and Coma Bernices, I believe the Lord is foreshadowing the coming glory to the temple, the change of our wineskins. So thank you for joining me today. 
and I'd love to see you in the 